My name is Andrew Weiler from www.strategiesandlanguagelearning.com. In this video clip, I'm going to focus on language learning strategies. In many posts and articles I've put on the site, I've mentioned that languages learn through us becoming more perceptive and more aware about our experiences in learning a language. In the two video clips I've put on site about teaching pronunciation to a young Vietnamese girl, there are two things you can observe. One, I'm actually helping her to improve her pronunciation. On another level, I'm also helping her to become more perceptive. For a person to become more perceptive is a key to becoming a better language learner. The book I'm currently working on, coming out later this year, will expand substantially on these themes. The mistake that is made a lot of the time in language learning classes and systems is to assume that the language learner is slow. Why I say that is because of the way the classes and language exercises are structured. What happens is, is that language learners are given some kind of rule or some kind of understanding that they have to learn, whatever that means, and then they have to apply what they've been given. By being given the rule or by being given whatever they have to learn, they assume that this is the way things go and consequently they end up looking for language classes and systems that will give them the rules. And they all have to do then is to practice the rules or practice whatever they've been taught. This basically disempowers them. What's important as a learner is to try and find out how to get the answers you need, not to find somebody who will give you the answers. No language learner is ever going to become proficient who's waiting for a roast duck to fly into their mouth. We learnt our first language by figuring it all out by ourselves. As an adult, we actually have access to those skills and also to a lot more that we've picked up as we've grown up. But fundamentally, if we don't figure out what we have to say, how we have to say it, when we have to say it, etc., we will remain forever shackled, waiting for somebody to tell us what we have to do, lacking confidence in the little we can say. Why? Because in our heart, we know we don't really know it. We are mouthing what we have learnt, not living what we have learnt. The little we can say is because somehow, along the way, we picked something up. However, that was only incidental. We don't really know how we did it. We don't really know how that happened. It, we just happened in the midst of doing the routines we are asked to do. The ones who become proficient are the ones who develop their powers of perception in necessary areas to the point where they can pick up on clues, on sounds, on ideas, on patterns, on all kinds of things that the ones who struggle with are not sensitive to. So here what I want to do is to show you an alternative means to learn something, in this case about one aspect of English spelling. I want to go back to an exercise that I've already posted on the site and get you to look more carefully at it. I'm doing this to show you that by focusing more on what is already there and dwelling on that, a lot can become apparent. This process makes us more powerful in our own right confirming to us that we do have the means to find things out for ourselves and that we are not dim-witted. For some of you figuring out this problem may take a little time, may take a lot of time, it may take no time at all. Whatever the case, it doesn't matter. What's important is you have a go at the process and see what you can learn from it. You will see by applying yourself to the problem, your powers of perception will improve because you start looking for other things that normally you would not be looking for. If you can't see it at the first sitting, that's fine. Come back to it at another time. And, I'll, and if that doesn't help, leave it for a day or two and you'll find, after living for a day or two, when you come back the next time, if you really sit yourself before the problem and just look at it, you will see things then that you would not have seen the first time or the second time you looked at the problem. The important thing is to give it a go. I'll provide you here with a little assistance. Namely, I will tell you that there are 10 observations you can make about what you see in this chart. Even if you're a good speller, you can benefit from this exercise. If you are not so good, you can possibly benefit even more. If you can figure out all the observations, do make a comment at the bottom, letting us know you found out. You might find more exceptions along the way that I haven't listed on the chart. Please write them down below, and at some point I'll update the chart to include everything else that people may have found. If you do find the 10 observations, please don't put them on the comments underneath, and this will allow other people to face the problem in their own right. Oh yes, you can download the chart from the address below and enjoy. Till next time, this is Andrew Weiler from www.strategiesandlanguagelearning.com.